Okay, um, hi everyone and welcome to our first foundation phase webinar. I'm just going to give you guys two minutes to settle in and just to wait for some more teams to join. And after that we will continue. Okay, um, are we ready to continue? Uh, before we start, I would just like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Victoria, and I'm the Education Specialist for the Foundation phase. So before we start this webinar, let's cover some basics. Uh, if you're struggling to hear me, make sure your audio is on and your speaker volume is turned up. I will uh, automatically mute you when we do this session. Um, should you have any questions, you uh, can ask a question in the question box below um, on the right or raise your hand. Uh, download this presentation and additional resources in the handout box below or on your right. You will also find information in the question box below or on your right. Remember to send us your questions. Um, I will be answering all the questions um, after the webinar. Attendees are encouraged to ask questions and leave comments. However, irrelevant or inappropriate comments will result in the attendee being dismissed from the session. Um, if we did not get your question, please send an email to academic at impact.co.za. Questions in the question box will be answered and made available, available afterwards. If you do not receive the question and answer, please send an email to info at impact.co.za. Visit the Impact YouTube channel for a recording of this session. Okay, wonderful, let's start. Um, so today I will be focusing on uh, guidance on the foundation phase study material and assessments. So I will take you through a few pointers on how to use your study material and a few tips um, when doing your assessments. Okay, so the two discussion points for today and the first one is tips on how to use your facilitator's guide. And the second uh, discussion point for the day is assessment guidelines for the foundation phase. Okay, so tips on how to use your facilitator's guide. So first of all, uh, we're going to have a look at the layout of the two different um, foundation phase facilitator's guides and grade groups. Okay, so in the foundation phase, we have grade R, and grade one to three. So the grade R facilitator's guide and the grade one to three facilitator guide um, has been set up differently according to the outcomes um, of these two grade groups. So in the grade R uh, facilitator's guide, we have four facilitator's guides, um, meaning that we have one for each term. 
Each term has its own facilitator's guide, which covers all the learning areas for grade R. For grade one and three, each subject has its own facilitator's guide, and each subject has four facilitator's guides um, covering all the content for the specific subject, subject area in that term. In other words, you will have a facilitator's guide for English home language or first additional language, Afrikaans home language or first additional language, mathematics and life skills. Okay, let's have a look at grade R. Uh, the grade R facilitator's content, um, the facilitator's guide content um, is as follows. So when you open your facilitator's guide, this is the information you will uh, have in your a table of content. Okay, so first of all, it's the impact approach to teaching and facilitating uh, learning in grade R, an introduction for the facilitator, objectives of the grade R curriculum, uh, organization of the learning program, a, a suggested schedule and um, daily program for grade R, the relevance of the daily program for the development of perceptual skills, free play uh, activities and indoors and outdoor, creative arts, uh, routine activities, physical education and movement play, and how to use this product. I'm now specifically going to look at uh, the suggested, um, the suggested daily program for grade R. Okay. So you will see that um, in your facilitator's guide, um, this table uh, is there, and this table is a layout of how you can structure your day. Um, this is only a guideline, so it's merely a guideline. Um, in the homeschooling space, you have the flexibility to organize your day um, according to your specific needs and routine. Um, what makes this guideline quite nice is that you know that you cover all of the areas needed for holistic development. Um, this guideline you can also find in the CAPS document, and the CAPS document outlined a suggested amount of hours for each subject area. Um, so this is only a guideline, which would be nice if you take this guideline, you can adjust it, move it around, um, specifically look at the time allocations that is given for um, specific areas in this day program. This will also help you to ensure that you spend enough time on each um, subject area. Okay, now we're going to look at the Grade R Facilitator's Guide Learning Unit Layout. So this will come in when you start working on your lessons. Um, so the first part that you will see is an overall view of the learning unit. So the first thing we see over here is Learning Unit 1, Who Am I? And then you will see there's a number one to 10. So that indicates the 10 days in which the unit has been divided into. So each day has a specific topic which forms part of your main topic. So in this case, the main topic is who am I? And your subtopics is for day one would be know yourself, day two, getting to know your body, uh, day three, what can I do with my body, etc. Okay, the second page you will see um, is this uh, diagram, which indicates how each subject area will be covered in the theme. So if you have a look at that, we can see that um, for physical education, uh, listening and speaking, emergent literacy, creative arts, mathematics. So what makes it nice is you can see how this theme has been integrated into each subject area for the foundation, for the grade R um, theme. Okay, then the next page you will find is rhymes, recipes, and tips. So this is just an additional page added to um, your learning unit, which will give you extra guidelines if there was any nursery rhymes, recipes, if there's any baking activities or science experiments, and a few handy tips that you can use when presenting these lessons. Okay, now let's look at uh, the Grade R Facilitator's Guide Daily Lesson Layout. Um, so I absolutely love this page. I think yeah, the layout is, makes sense. It's easy to read um, and it really helps a lot when you need to present a lesson. So the first element I want to highlight is the week. Um, so on top of the page, it indicates the week um, that you are in, then the day that you are busy with, 
the subtopic for that day. So we know now if we go back to our previous slide that the topic, uh, the main topic for this learning unit was who am I? Um, but the subtopic for the specific day is know yourself. Okay, then you can you will see it has been divided into sessions. So your day has been divided into um, sessions for you, which also makes it a bit easier to um, facilitate the daily lessons and to ensure that you cover all of the areas in your day. Um, and then furthermore, you will see there's a blue block that indicates the resources that you will need for that specific um, lesson. So that's nice when you need to organize the workspace of the learner and prepare for your lesson um, before you facilitate that you ensure that you have everything you need to be able to present the lesson. Okay, now let's have a look at the symbols on the page. I also think this is a great add-on. Um, the blue owl indicates what the facilitator must do. The pencil tells you what the learner must do. And then the green puzzle um, gives the facilitator a few handy tips and additional information um, regarding that lesson. So, um, please do have a look at those um, symbols on your page to also guide you on, on what's happening and um, to give you a clear instruction of who, who needs to do what. Okay, let's have a look at grade one to three. Okay, the grade one to three facilitators guide content. So the guide I used in this PowerPoint is the grade one home language example. Um, just take note that all of the grade one, two, three facilitators guides um, layout is, is the same. And so the example I used was the English home language. All right. And um, so this is also what you will find in your table of contents would be your introduction, impact approach to a language in grade one. So then um, the next few blocks is the focus areas for this specific subject. Um, you will see for the different subjects, there's different focus areas um, in that subject. So for English specifically, it's listening and speaking and reading, phonics, writing and handwriting. Okay, then materials and resources, how to use the materials and resources, and how to choose a storybook. Um, and then also a suggested table for the grade, the suggested timetable. I'm now going to focus on the materials and resources as well as the suggested timetable for the grade. Right, let's have a look at the materials and resources. Um, so I think we're always quite uncertain of what the child will need um, in grade one. Uh, we always see these big boxes at Walton's with all of the stationery in them. It's quite a daunting box because will the child use all of this and what is this and why do we need this? Um, so that's why I love this table in the facilitator's guide because it gives you a clear guideline of exactly what the child will need for the subject and how they will use it. Um, so the first important thing that I want us to have a look at is what the grade one package comprises of. And this is specifically based on English home language. So please take note that this table will differ um, according to the subject. Okay, so let's see in the grade one um, package for home language, you'll have the facilitator's guide. Um, also, the facilitator's guide can be seen as the teacher's Bible. This really is something that um, you should use when, when teaching. It, it's really a great um, help, gives you the guidance you need. So I really want to motivate you that um, you should really use your facilitator's guide um, when planning your lesson. Okay. Um, second of all, we have the workbook for reading and writing, handwriting and phonics. Um, if we go back to this table of content, and um, those are also the areas I highlighted, listening and speaking, phonics, and handwriting. So you will see them um, for each of those main focus areas, there is a workbook. Then the readers um, that the child will read in the specific um, grade group, the learner aid, the facilitator's aid, the assessment portfolio book, and assessment guidelines and memorandum. So that is what you will find in the English home language for grade one. Then let's go to uh, what you have to buy. Um, then you have a, a comprehensive list of exactly what the child will need. And at the bottom, there is a small description of um, why the learner, what the learner will use these resources for. So when setting up your stationary list for the year, it's also always good um, to just refer back to these lists in your uh, facilitator's guide 
to see exactly what you what you will need. Okay. Um, now moving on to the suggested timetable. So you will see that this timetable is a bit more comprehensive and detailed than uh, the grade R daily program. The reason for that being is that in the CATS document, um, they suggest the amount of hour for a specific subject. Um, so if you have a look, you will see for grade one, the suggested amount of hours is 23 hours um, a week. Uh, home language is eight hours, first additional language is two hours, mathematics seven hours, and then life skills six hours. So here they took that amount of hours and they put them, um, divided them into a, a well-balanced timetable for you to be able to follow. Again, this is only a suggested timetable and a suggested guideline, so you can adapt this according to your daily program and your specific needs. Um, what is important and what I would like to motivate you to do is look at the amount of hours for each subject when planning your daily program and just ensure that you include enough of each hour, um, of the correct amount of hours um, into your daily program to ensure that you spend enough time on the specific um, subject areas. Okay. Uh, now let's have a look at the Grade 1 Facilitator's Guide and Learning Unit Layout. So this is also a bit different to, to the Grade R book, um, but it also provides all of the information needed. It's very comprehensive, and so I also want to motivate you to, to use your guide. Okay, so it also indicates the learning units on top of the page, the week that we are in, and the day that you're busy with. It's also been um, divided into sessions, and it also gives you the focus area of that session. session excuse me. So for this um, specific one, the focus area is listening and speaking, and the theme is my body. And then it gives you all the detail needed. It also then indicates what resources you will need to be able to present um, this lesson. Okay, now let's have a look at a few assessment guidelines for the foundation phase. Um, so this is quite um, complex uh, with times. Um, it, it becomes a daunting task, but um, I want to tell you today that it's not that daunting and it's not such a big task if you just understand how the marking scale works. So I hope after today that we can calm the nerves when it comes to assessment um, and that you will take these few tips that I give you um, when doing your assessments. Okay, so let's have a look at how the foundation phase assessments um, have been structured. Okay, so when you start doing assessments, use the assessment guide and memorandum to guide you through the process. So when you have the memorandum and you've seen the memorandum before you start the assessment with the child, you will have a good idea of what exactly the child needs to be able to do. And um, this is also quite important in the case where your child needs assistance um, and asks a question, then you are able to clearly answer um, the child because you know what is expected from the child. Um, so I would really motivate you to ensure that you go through the memorandum um, as a guideline and just to conceptualize exactly what, what is expected from the child beforehand. Please take note that the portfolio does not contain all the oral or practical assessments. It only contains the written work. Um, you will also see that this has been indicated in your facilitator's guide, um, so that can also be a guideline for you. Um, then there's no specific guidelines for when assessments must be done. So you can do them whenever you want to do them and whenever you feel that the learner is ready. However, we would suggest that you do the assessments uh, in the last two weeks of each term. You will also see in the index of your learner aid and your facilitator's guide that there has been made, um, position, uh, provision has been made um, at the end of each term for assessments. Um, in this regard, uh, I would also uh, like to motivate you to first cover the content and be sure that the learner is ready to be assessed um, before doing the assessments. Um, so spend time on the work in the term and do it at the end of the term because then you know um, it's an accurate assessment and the learner has covered the work. Um, so that would be a good, good way of doing it. Um, 
then we do not require you to send in any portfolios or books. So we trust you and we are sure that you're doing a fair assessment. You can capture the marks um, at any time throughout the year. Please note that all marks must be captured by the 31st of December 2020. So you have the whole year to do your assessment. So if you decide to do it um, uh, twice a year, at the end of each term, at the end of the year, it does not matter except if you, um, uh, if the only, um, sorry, excuse me, the only thing that needs to happen is that it needs to be captured by the end of the year. Um, however, we would uh, like to motivate you to do the assessment at the end of the term, as indicated um, in your facilitator's guide and learner aid. Okay, here's a few um, assessment tips that you can just um, take note of. Uh, at the end of each um, session, there's a specific criteria along with the assessment rubric. So you will see the assessment rubric, and with that assessment rubric, there is a description of what is expected from that specific um, assessment. Then um, use the descriptions in the rubric and award uh, marks based on the seven point scale. So in the foundation phase, we use a seven point scale to allocate our marks. In the next slide, I will briefly discuss that um, point scale with you. Um, some of the marks can be combined, um, and the facilitator must use their own discretion about which mark to award. There is no specific order in which tasks. Um, and tests may take place. It, um, it can be captured uh, during the term in any time. Uh, focus on continuous assessment rather than basing the mark only on formal assessment. And with continuous assessment, that means assess your child throughout the term. As you work through things, make observations, make notes, um, as, do a mock assessment before the time uh, where you change the content of the formal assessment. Um, so yeah, there's different ways of doing that. Um, yeah, so throughout the term, try and do um, continuous assessment. Then the mark sheet at the end of each, um, each section may be used to record the learner's progress. And then only the best mark must, must be captured. Um, do not work out an average for the learner. So let's just quickly have a look at the seven uh, Point marking scale that I referred to that we use throughout the foundation phase. So a seven is the outstanding achievement. Um, a six is very good. The child is able to accurately execute the skills. Um, number five, good execution of skills. Um, number four is um, satisfactory, adequate achievement. Number three is a moderate achievement. So this is where I actually want to put some emphasis on. This is where the learner did require some assistance from your side when, when completing um, the assessment. Number two is usually when the child, um, when you have to sit with the child and do the assessment. And then number one is when the child did not understand the outcome of the assessment. Um, so that is just a guideline on how we mark that. According to um, the specific uh, task that's being assessed, that rubric um, which is used will also give you a description which is applicable to what is being assessed. Okay. Then, um, accessing your assessments. Um, the assessments will be included in the lesson material, but will also be available online for those who order the electronic version of the books. The portfolio and memorandums can be find, found here. To access the portfolio books and memorandum, go online to My Impact, Academics, Assessment Administration, download per learner or download the subject. Then the marks can be captured on My Impact under Academics, Assessment Administration and Capture per Learner. To generate a report, go to Academics, Assessment Report, Term and Final. This option will only be available once you've completed all of the sections of the assessment. Okay. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask me and I will be answering them after this webinar. Um, so thank you so much. Um, if you're not registered with IMPACT now, please contact us at info at Okay, thank you so much, guys.